Good morning. Today I have the 8 inch with work light bench drill press. 5 speed. So let's put it together. Okay, today I have 8 inch bench press. Today I have Central Machinery 8 inch bench drill press with work light 5 speeds. Some table, some lever arms. Very, very small drill press. And that's going to be the chuck. Very small chuck. Very, very small chuck. Also has a bag of parts down on this side. And 90% of it's just top. And the base stand. Here's the top. There's the work light with the switch. This shouldn't be very hard to put together. Here's the base wrapped in plastic and covered with a coat of machine oil and you can you can see that so much of it so here's the bolts that hold this in i know from prior things you need to check the threads first they cut the threads but they leave so much junk then bolts won't hardly go on but if you can at least get them to thread you can get a socket on them and put them in i'm afraid of cross threading them Okay, these two, just like the 10 inch, these two I can thread the bolt in, but this one I can't. So let's take a look and see how much debris is in there. This is the hole that has the problem. It doesn't really look like any debris in there. Sometimes you can turn it over and go from the bottom. Maybe it's clear enough to thread. And it is. So I'll have to drive that in with a crescent wrench or something. So a 14 millimeter fits these. Since I've got my new Warrior 18 volt lithium, I'll go ahead and use that. So what I'm gonna do is just drive this in Do that with all of them to clear debris. I think they're just messy at the factory, I don't know. So there's the base. And this is also covered in machine oil. Feel it. Okay, so we have a bolt, what they call a spring washer, but is a lock washer to me. A washer with the shiny side up, of course. So what I'll do is put these in. I'll put those in just enough to hold it without um, tightening it down. If I tighten it down, I might not be able to get the other ones in. So bolt, spring washer, lock washer, washer with the shiny side up. Why do we put the shiny side up? Because it looks better. And one more time. Okay, let's see. Uh, 
Uh, I'm so close to the bolt is so close that the socket won't fit down on it. All of them that way. So do it by hand. It's only 20 degrees in the shop today, so touching these cold steel parts, not very fun. So I've got all of those tight. I encourage you to read the manual. I think they probably have 10 pages of what not to do for every three pages of what to do. And the great thing about the manual is the exploded view diagram that shows you all the parts. So if you would have a problem with any of these bolts, you can look and see what they are. Bolt M8 times 20. So you can go get spare parts for this. At least the bolts anyway. Retaining rings, things like that. The table out. Covered with machine oil that's still wet. Sometimes it's dry, but this is still wet. Okay, this one just has a, a move up and down. Actually, lower that and tighten it. We'll leave it like that until we get it together. Okay, now we put the top on. There we go. I consider this drill press one step above a toy. And I say one step above a toy because I would not use it for most of my projects. But I would use it with a countersink bit. I'm going to put a countersink bit in this with no pre-drill below it. Beside it will be the 10 inch with a countersink bit that does pre-drill the holes. And a nice little light. It does use a somewhat standard bulb. If you can't get this bulb, I'm sure you can get one that's close to it. There we go. Now that is reflective, so it puts more light out. There's two set screws on each side, and that positions the top onto the column and use the allen key this way to tighten it real quick. Then I'll use this way to actually get some torque on it to make sure it's tight. But before I tighten those, I want to be sure this is as centered as I can get it. Okay, that looks, that looks pretty good. This. The spindle is pretty much centered with the column, so I'll tighten these. And if you use the Allen wrench this way, you can really torque those in. This thing weighs about six pounds. Oh, there's only uh, set screws on one side. That's kind of different. I would have expected both sides. The lever arms just screw in and you want to get those as tight as you can because you don't want them coming off in the middle of drilling. And of course there's three of them. This is a pretty standard drill, just miniature. <laughs> This is, in my opinion, this is not a general use drill. This is for very light duty jobs. I wouldn't be drilling a lot of holes with it, these large holes. Well, that's this. This is a handle for this, so I'll take the screw off. Lift this up. Okay, so they give you this little knob, and it's for right here. So open this up. through the hole and then put the knob on the screw. Now 
Well, I'll use a screwdriver to tighten that. A smaller screwdriver would have been better. So while we're here, this is the way to adjust the speed. You push the motor in. That will allow you room to move these. Um, the slowest RPM is 760. I think I'm gonna go for that. And that's the bottom on both of these. So just press down or up and start turning these and they'll go around. So I got this one on the bottom. You want to do this side, if you're going down, you want to do this side first because it'll give you the slack to make it bigger on this side. So there we go. That's the smallest setting. Now you're going to need to pull this motor back. But see how light that is. Um, just use something to pry this. Pry it back some and tighten it up. So there's a knob right there. So there we go. That's tight. Let's pull back some. They don't have a diagram showing how loose the belt should be, but it's got looseness in it, and I think that's enough. I want to make sure that works before I put the spindle on. Okay, so I need to put the chuck on. Very, very small chuck. So it has a key. It's a different key than the 10 inch. So here's the chuck. Very, very small chuck. So what you want to do is open this all the way up. There, it's all the way open. Okay, you need to get something to clean them with. I'm using a paper towel. It's one small spindle. That chuck has a very small spindle for I don't even know if I can get a paper towel through that. Technically I don't need to. I just need to clean the part of the chuck that goes on the spindle. Ah, there I got it. You can see all that grease that's getting out of there or machine oil. And that's all I'm gonna do. And I'm going to clean this, and this is why I made sure it worked before I tried to put the check on. Okay, let me put this all the way down. I'm actually going to move it out of the way. The manual says to put this on and hit it with a rubber mallet, but you actually should put a piece of wood in front of it anyway. Now. A drill press is made to put force down, so those two mate together. If you put something on here like a drum sander, that could put sideways force. I've seen these chucks fall off with a sander, so just be careful if you're going to use a sander. Does the light work? Well, in this day and age, I'd rather have an LED light, but that seems to work okay. I've got a lot of light in here, so you can't really see how bright that actually is. Okay, this one actually makes less noise than the 10 inch. The 10 inch, in my opinion, was not very uh, finely machined. Uh, turn that light out because I don't need it. Okay, and this one actually has, in my opinion, a better death stop. So. You take these and move them down, and it's two nuts. The depth adjustment is two nuts. So you take the bottom one and put against the how far you want it to go. Then you take the second one and you lock against it. So you're going to have to have a couple of wrenches ready to do this. It's still better than the other one, but I'm not sure it's that great. So then when you go down, it'll stop. And it has a little gauge, metric and SAE. Uh, having a quick release on this would be marginally better. 
So the next thing to do is to square the table. Now that's pretty solid in terms of moving like this. The box says it rotates 360, and it does, but then it says it rotates 45. And I wonder what that meant. The reason they say that, the, the reason they say that is the, the table will rotate 360, but the marking only goes to 45. This is the lock. You just tighten this, locks it in place, loosen it. So it's gonna have a lot of room to move. You have to manually set this where you want it so there's no cranking up and down. But my 20 year old Black & Decker uses the exact same method. Okay, so now we need to verify that this is 90 degrees. I have a piece of steel. Um, I don't think I'm gonna loosen the bolt. There's the bolt you loosen to turn this. I'm actually gonna leave it like it is because it's fairly tight. And I'm gonna take a different approach. I have this available if I need it. But I'm gonna put the bar in. So the table doesn't really have a centering function. So you gotta adjust that by hand. Got a lot of vibration. That's in this lid. Okay, you can adjust that by bending this out a little. Makes it go down a lot harder, but it should hold it and stop the vibration. There's still some in there. It has two holes here where you could mount it to a table. Might help it from vibrating. Personally, that doesn't bother me. Well, this wouldn't have been my first choice of how to measure this, but it will work. Uh, actually, that's pretty much dead on. This moves constantly. You didn't tighten it. So, <laughs> there's enough deflection in this whole assembly. Okay, there's enough deflection in this whole assembly that even though that's 90 degrees, Looks like front to back. Side to side seems to be well, less, but it's still there. This is never going to be a extremely accurate drill press because as soon as it gets force, it will move. As the saying goes, it is what it is. It's really a lot like the drill presses I'm used to using just a lot smaller. It does have some noise. Okay, I paid $47 for this. Didn't think that was that bad. All I plan to use it for is countersinks. And I think for countersinks, it'll be fine. If I, if, if I had planned to use a drill press for anything but countersinks, I would not have bought this one. But I want two drill presses with countersinks and one to drill stuff with. So this will be on the shelf with a countersink only, no uh, pre-drill bit. So there we go. Amazingly fast to put together. Not very complicated. It only has set screws on one side, not the other, but on a lightweight drill press like this, I'm not sure that that's a problem. And the motor only sets on one side. So there's the set screws and here is the motor adjustment but here again with something this small and this light i'm not so sure that that's a problem and it's only got a two inch travel that isn't a lot of travel but for what i want it for it's almost perfect 
Doesn't have a lot of power. So for $47, I can dedicate this to just a countersink. Now, it's got a lot of machine oil on it. I'll probably put a wooden table over top of this that's removable, of course. Going back to squaring the table, if the table was grossly out, I would have taken the rubber mallet and tapped on it until it moved just a tiny bit to get right. So, I put it together with a crescent wrench and a socket on this. I could have done it totally with the crescent wrench and the two Allen keys that they gave us. One Allen key goes to the set screws. The other Allen key that they give you is for the set screws on the pulleys. I'm not sure that I would ever mess with those. As long as they're working fine, I would leave them alone. But you do they do give you one if you need it. So a nice little drill press. It's uh, one step up from a toy. I wouldn't plan on any serious uh, drilling with it. Wouldn't plan on any serious forces being placed on it. I plan to use it for wood only. But for $47, I think it's a pretty good deal. It's less than half the price of the 10 inch. Okay, so if you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. I finished setting up the five speed drill press, eight inch. It's got two inches of travel. If you remember, I bought this specifically for countersinks. So I put a countersink bit in. There's no pre-drill drill bit in there. It's right on the tip of the mount. Adjust at the table. So I can set it for about a three-fourth inch board to a one-and-a-half board. So there's what it did. That's exactly what I wanted to do. I put a wooden drill press table in. Very simple. This thing is meant to do countersinks only. I could probably do this work without a drill press table, but I just wanted something bigger to balance the wood on. So. so specifically, this will be to do countersinks that already have a hole. It's set at the lowest speed, and this is really what it's going to be. I made this so it would lift off. I have two keys, and that holds the table pretty steady, but allows it to lift right out. Since it's just for countersinks, I don't see a need to mount it so it doesn't lift. It'll sit like this all the time, and when I need to drill a countersink, I'll just go do it. Works perfect. This is exactly what I wanted it for. All it's going to do is sit and drill countersinks. The way I've adjusted the table in this height should be set up good for three quarter inch boards too. So I shouldn't even have to move the table up and down very often. I know $47 for that convenience might seem like a lot, but I spent a lot of time changing drill bits when I'm using this. So I want this one to be countersinks without a pre-drill uh, drill bit. The 10 inch will be the smallest countersink and pre-drill drill bit. So my Black & Decker will then be for general use. I used a piece of recycled plywood that had a couple holes in it, one of which is perfect for the chuck key. So that'll just sit there, be waiting to be used. Although I don't anticipate using it, I also don't want to lose it. So, if you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.